Howdy! I'm Chris Beaver, I'm one of the art and animation leads here at Powerhouse Animation Studios, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create a pixel art character inside of Photoshop. I'll start with a sketch. This might be on paper or digital. In this case, I've sketched something up in pencil and scanned it, and now I reduce its size so that the drawing itself is 80 pixels tall. That should give me enough room to do everything I want to. I create a new layer to work on, greatly lower the opacity of the sketch so I'll be able to see where my edges are, and begin to paint his silhouette with the pencil tool. By starting with the silhouette, I force myself to think of the basic shapes and how well they read against one another. I lose the shape of his hammer inside the shape of his body if I stick to the sketch, so I pull that arm outward. When all the lines are closed, I fill them in where I can with the paint bucket tool until I have a complete figure. Once the silhouette is in place, I create some basic colors for the skin, clothing, and so on. Make a few swatches of base colors, duplicate them, and then use the copies to make tints and shades. While I do this, I don't just change the value, I also slightly bump around the hue and the saturation. Highlights become more vibrant, while shadows become more subdued and color shifted to cooler tones. This makes your colors feel way richer. The palette you create is hugely important. Grab colors from that rather than the character, to keep everything as consistent as possible. I now use those colors to paint some of the rough base tones for the character. These colors can change at any time, and I'll show you how, but keeping them properly separated along the way can be hugely helpful down the road. I try to think of the character as a 3D sculpture, and build up my values from darkest to lightest to where they'd face the light source. It also helps to think of which areas will be important to the character, and punching them up with contrast while letting less important areas drop into shadow. Remember to treat surfaces differently from one another. For example, the metal on his hammer should be smoother and shinier than his skin and clothes. Conversely, I make the rough fur trim on his clothes very random in texture, peppering light and dark bits which differentiates it from the smoother parts. As you work, don't feel like you're married to your sketch. When parts of your character are getting too small or complicated, look for ways to simplify them. It will read much better at a small scale, and it'll be easier to animate later if you need to. If you decide to change a color, go to the Paint Bucket tool, set the tolerance to zero, uncheck the contiguous option, and fill that swatch in with a new color. This changes every pixel using that color across the whole layer at the same time. You can also select a color, or even a group of colors, with the Magic Wand tool using those same settings. Then hit Ctrl U to bring up the Hue Saturation adjustment and play around until you have a color you like. Keep adding and refining details and simplifying shapes to bring it all together. Lastly, delete your swatch palette or copy it to a new layer for safekeeping. You can export scaled up copies easily by hitting Ctrl Shift Alt S to bring up the Save for Web dialog. Set the image size to 400 or 500% and the quality to nearest neighbor for pixel perfect squares without blurring. Thanks for watching. I hope it was helpful. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe on the Powerhouse Animation YouTube channel. Make sure to check out all the other pro tip videos that we have as well.